dear students how are you all children i welcome you again to the online video class of computers uh, children as i have already informed you that your half yearly exams are about to start uh, within the next month next month okay so children uh, i have decided to uh, start the revision work through the modules which i am uh, sending you I have already told you that you have to be updated with your current diary app and uh, all the instructions will be sent to you with the current diary app only okay children as we are done with our first term examination uh, most of you have done very well in the exam but there are few students who have not attempted the questions question paper very well so uh, for them i would like to say that children uh, it's high time to pull up your socks because are about to come okay and it is mandatory to all the students to give the exam because until unless you will not give the exam you will not uh, supposed to be promoted to the next class so uh, keep prepare yourself uh, for the examination and score good marks so now children uh, let us start with the revision work okay uh, so children uh, this is your book now i'm going to start uh, with the first chapter uh, with the revision okay now we'll do revision of the first chapter now children in this chapter we have studied that a computer is an electronic machine it can perform many tasks uh, like you can play games on it you can watch movies listen to music uh, you can in fact write on it uh, you can prepare any document any letter on it so now children let us understand how uh, the computer work how does a computer work now children a computer requires input okay it requires some data which are the raw facts and figures now raw facts and figures means uh, these are the pictures or the images letters or words which does not convey any meaning they are just simply raw facts and figures next it requires what it requires some instructions to perform any task okay and after the processing is done it gives you the result let us take an example suppose i have given you the data 2 and 3 here i have given you the data this is the data in the form of numbers now does it convey any meaning what to have what we have to do with these data okay now i'll give you the instructions okay i ask you to add them now instruction is given to you now you will process it in your brain and uh, you will produce the result what what would be the result 2 plus 3 is equals to what yes children 5 so 2 and 3 are what these are the data okay and what what is this this is the process processing is done in the form of addition okay and after this data is given to the computer processing is done then we get what we get the result this is what this is the result or the output or the output okay children so this is how a computer works it accepts the data processes it and gives the result so through this we have come to know that a computer follows what it follows ipo cycle what does it follow it follow ipo cycle to perform any task i stands for input p stands for process and o stands for output okay children now children here are written some terms that are related to uh, the computer uh, which will help you in explaining that how a computer works now children data the first term is data what is the data data are the raw facts and figures means they are the raw facts uh, until unless any instructions is given they are raw okay next come input input is what input is the data or instructions which is given to the computer okay and according to that uh, instruction data is get processed okay now next come input devices now a computer cannot work of its own so uh, if you want to give any instruction 
that needs some devices. So the parts of the computer, uh, the devices which helps in feeding the data into the computer, those are called input devices. They are considered as what? Input devices. Okay. Next comes output. What is an output? Output is the result which is obtained after the processing is done on the data. Okay. Next comes output devices. Now children, data is given, processing is done and result is, uh, now what left? Yes. Result. So, we require some devices which can give us the result. So for this, the devices which are used to give the result, okay, these devices are called output devices like printer and monitor. Monitor displays the result and printer gives the output in the form of print on a paper. It gets print the result on a paper. Okay children, move on to the next topic. Let's revise it also. Computer system. Now what is a computer system? So children, computer system is a collection of many devices which are combined together. Okay, in order to perform any function. Now, Computer system is divided into two main parts. What are they? They are hardware and software. Now children, what are hardwares? Hardwares are the visible components. These are the devices which you can see and you can physically touch them. Okay, so devices which we can see and we can touch are the hardwares like CPU, monitor, keyboard, mouse, scanner, printer. They all are the hardwares which we can touch. Okay, children. Now, the next part is software. Now, what is a software? Software is a set of programs through which a computer work, on which the computer work. Set of programs, set of instructions which are given to the computer so that they can perform a particular task. Okay, children. Now, let us discuss more about software. Now, children, software. Children, software is a set of programs that... Uh, is given to the computer so that it can perform the task okay now softwares are divided into two parts system software and application software okay children what is a system software system software is a software which helps in managing and controlling the function of a computer okay and what is an application software Application software are the software which are designed specially to perform a particular task. Like system software, there are uh, they are also of two types, operating system and utility programs. Operating systems are what? These are the softwares they manage, they control the working of a hardware and software. Okay, a software makes a hardware work. Without any software, a hardware is a simply a device, empty device. It will not work. Okay, so a hardware requires some instructions to work according to that. Okay, now utility small programs uh, that are inbuilt with the means utility program helps in smooth running of an operating system like. Operating systems are, examples of operating systems are what? Windows, okay? Windows 8, Windows 10, uh, latest version is 10 now, okay? So your computer in your laptop, there is an operating system, Windows, okay? Also, if we want to uh, make that window, that operating system to work effectively, we use what? Utility programs like antiviruses, okay? And also, uh, uh, if we want to reduce the size, file so we require what zip files zip softwares that can reduce the size of a big uh, file okay so utility programs helps in smooth working of an operating system okay children so examples of operating system are what windows 7 windows 8 the entire window operating system okay next uh, example of utility programs are what antiviruses uh, winzip file and uh, uh, Windows Explorer, these all are the examples of antiviral uh, utility programs. Okay, children? Now, here, application software. Application software is uh, specially designed to perform a task. Like, we use MS Paint to draw or to paint something on a computer. Okay? Next, we use MS Word to type a letter or a document. Okay? 
विंडो मीडिया प्लेयर वी नीड दिस सॉफ्टवेयर स्पेशली दिस सॉफ्टवेयर टू लिसन टू म्यूजिक और टू वॉच द वीडियोज ओके चिल्ड्रेन सो दीज आर द स्पेशली डिजाइन सॉफ्टवेयर विच हेल्प इन परफॉर्मिंग अ पर्टिकुलर टास्क Now, children, here comes our next topic: central processing unit, that is CPU. The children, the way our brain takes the decision in human body, okay? The same way, central processing unit, that is CPU, takes all the decision in the computer system. It is divided into three parts. How many parts? Three parts. Now, what are they? arithmetic and logic unit see children this unit is responsible to do all the calculations mathematical calculations and logical functions mathematical calculations like addition subtraction multiplication division uh, all okay and logical operations like greater than comparison in which comparisons are there between like which is greater which is smaller which is equal to so these kind of operations are are done under which unit arithmetic and okay children now next comes control unit see children this unit is responsible of controlling all the functions of a computer okay this unit make sure that whatever instructions are given to the computer the work is done according to that only if addition um addition processing is given so the computer will perform the addition only if subtraction is given so uh computer will perform the subtraction process only okay so the control unit controls all the uh, hardware and software so that they can work according to the instructions which is given to them by us by the users okay children next comes so children memory unit is responsible for storing all the data and instructions which are given to the computer children if i ask you to note down uh, something on your computer so you would require what if all the pages are filled in your notebook you didn't get any you won't get any space to write down something okay the same way a computer if you want to work if you want to perform any task on a computer you would require some space so that space is provided to you by what yes by the memory unit that is mu okay okay it gives us the space to do the task now computer memory is divided into two parts how many parts children two parts what are they they are primary memory and secondary memory now what is a primary memory it is the basic memory which is already built inside the computer system okay so primary memory has smaller storage capacity memory okay now primary memory is also divided into two parts that is ram and rom ram stands for random access memory and rom stands for read only memory now children there is a big difference between these two memories so now children ram and rom they use to store the data and instructions but in ram in this memory we can read and write the data as well means it will give you the temporary space for doing your work which you are already doing okay but when the write has gone data is lost if you will not save that data it will get lost if you are working on the ram memory uh let's take an example suppose you are uh, doing painting on a computer okay you are drawing something on a computer so the space which is provided to you at that time is ram memory you are doing work on the ram memory uh, uh, with the space which is provided you to by the ram but when the light has gone and you have not saved your drawing the data will get lost if you again switch okay so it means that ram is volatile in nature volatile means the data the uh, things get lost if the light has gone so ram is volatile in nature now children in rom read only memory in this memory those programs are stored uh, which which you cannot change the set of instructions which you cannot change in rom only we can read the data but we cannot write anything on it suppose ms paint is a software installed in the computer so we cannot change it so that data is stored here permanently so that is why rom is non volatile in nature
light has gone there is no effect on it no program will get lost if you um, suppose ms paint program is stored on the computer in the room memory okay when the light has gone and again you will switch on the computer you will get that program installed or already there okay it will not get lost so that is why room is non volatile in nature okay children now next comes secondary memory secondary memory are the devices which store the data permanently they are the external devices okay which you can attach with a computer in which hard disk hard disk is a secondary memory it is it is a device which stores the large amount of data whether it is cd whether it is dvd whether it is pen drive but hard disk is the device which store largest amount of data it is already built inside the computer examples of secondary memory are what cd compact it can store up to 700 mb data next comes dvd dvd stands for digital versatile disc also we can say digital video disc the next comes dvd dvd stands for digital versatile disc now between cd and dvd dvd can store large amount of data than cd but not than the hard disk okay between cd and dvd dvd stores the large amount of data okay next comes pen drive pen drive also stores large amount of data but hard disk can store the largest amount of data among all of them okay children now we have come to the end of the revision part of this chapter chapter number 1 now you will revise this chapter and you will uh, learn the exercises questions okay all the objective part questions you have to do all the questions uh, from first to five in your notebook okay you will revise them and then after you will write down the answers in your notebook okay children so this is enough for today we will be meeting soon in the next video with the next chapter till then stay safe stay home and complete assignments